So I've previously mentioned that there's a lot of maths in Futurama, and I'm going to show you two more bits of maths from Futurama. There's an episode called the Da Vinci Code, where the, the, the Planet Express crew are investigating a mystery around the Last Supper. They think there may be a robot that sat around the table as one of the apostles. And so they go to uh, Futuroma, as they call it, and uh, they're in a crypt, uh, and they find this tomb with this mysterious Roman number on it. Well, it's not a number, um, and it's not a date either, really. It looks more like a Roman mathematical equation. Look at these Roman numerals. So to understand what this is all about, we need to look at Mersenne numbers. And I'm sure Mersenne numbers have cropped up previously on number five, but just to remind you, a, a Mersenne number, Father Mersenne was, a, I think, a Parisian monk who would correspond with lots of other mathematicians. And he came up with this number, which is of the form 2 to the power p minus 1, where p is prime. And so let's put in some prime numbers. Um, 2 to the power 2 minus 1 is 4 minus 1 is 3. Let's put in another prime number. 2 to the power 3 minus 1 is 8 minus 1 is 7. 2 to the power 4 we're not interested in because that's not a prime. But 5 minus 1 is uh, 8, 16, 32. That would be 31 if we take away the 1. 2 to the power 6 we're not interested in. 7 is a prime. Um, 32, 64, 128, so that's 127. Next prime is 2 to the 11. Now, one thing you'll notice about these, uh, 2 to the power 11 minus 1. So that is 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128, 256, 5, 12, 1024. 2048 minus 1 is 2047. So these are called Mersenne numbers, okay? And we put in a prime here, and bang, at the other end we get a prime, a prime, a prime, and a prime. Um, now this one, okay, this is a bit tricky actually. This one, it's hard to tell whether or not it's a prime, but at first sight, this seems to be a pretty good way of generating primes, and actually is a very good way of generating primes, but it's not foolproof. And in fact, the first number, the first Mersenne number that's not a prime is this one here, 2047. Uh, because 2047 equals, uh, let me have a look, I think for memory, it's 23 times 89, okay? So this Mersenne number is not a Mersenne prime. And this equation is kind of embedded up here, because if we translate from these Roman numerals, what we've got is 2 to the power 11, minus, in brackets, 10, 23, multiplied by 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, minus 1 is 89, okay? And 2 to the power 11, we know is 2048. We know that this is 2047, so this minus this equals a 1. So what we've got is, is a kind of a Mersenne number here, which is not a Mersenne prime, which is why it's kind of a little bit interesting, uh, encoded on this tomb, in this tomb in future Roma, in future Rama, in Roman numerals. So that's one of the things that, if you're watching the episode, you kind of think it's a funny story, it's an interesting story, typical future Rama, but hidden within it is this weird mathematical reference, which you'd only get if you pause it, freeze frame it, unpack the maths, and then you figure out what's happening. Aha! The markings indicate how many paces we need to take. You won. Okay, we're there. They love maths, and, and they're not mathematicians anymore. And, and that, this is just their way of expressing that love of math. I'm not super familiar with how animation shows are made, but I've seen bits and pieces. And I know these guys are obviously sitting and writing scripts mm. in a writer's room. Other people actually do the drawings and the animations. Yeah. This is not germane to the story in any way. So do they just put like a note in there saying, if there's a gravestone, make sure you put this number on the side? Or how, how do they communicate? Yeah, no, no, they, they do. They, they, they write it in detail. That, you know, the, the, this, this, is, this is every aspect of what they want in the scene. I remember in the very, one of the very, in the very, very first episode of The Simpsons, first kind of real episode of The Simpsons, there was a joke about calculus and they get it wrong. On the blackboard, the maths is actually not correct. And I think that was an example where they scribbled down some maths, they sent it off to be animated, and whoever was doing the animation didn't really appreciate how important the mathematical detail was, and there's an error. But I think ever since then, they've been very careful with what their mathematical instructions are, and they're very, very careful to check them afterwards as well, no doubt. So yeah.
in an episode called The Honking, where the Futurama crew go off to a spooky castle for the reading of a will. And it's all a bit scary, and um, they're walking through this castle, and then suddenly blood appears on the wall. Zero one zero one one zero zero one zero one. Okay, so this binary sequence in blood, it's on the wall. All a bit scary. So let's find out what this binary sequence is in decimal. We've got a, a one, two, a four, eight, sixteen, thirty-two, sixty-four, one twenty-eight, uh, two fifty-six. Okay. So if we add these up, we've got five, thirty-seven, one hundred and one, uh, three fifty-seven. Okay, that equals 357. Now, 357 is not a particularly interesting number. As far as I know, it doesn't scream out as being a perfect number or a Mersenne prime or any of those interesting numbers we come across sometimes. But then Bender, the robot, turns around and he sees the number reflected in a mirror. And so the binary digits are switched around. So let's have a look at this binary sequence now. If we reverse the digits, we now have a, a 1 0, 1 0. 010010. Okay, so we can now translate that binary sequence back into decimal. We've got a 2, no 4s, we've got an 8, a 16, 32, 64, we've got a 128, no 256s, uh, and a 512. 2 and 8 is 10, 10 and 16 is 26, 26 and 128 is 154, 154 and 512 is 666. Six. <clears throat> the number of the devil, the number of the beast. And so Bender is just completely terrified and he runs away screaming. One zero, one zero, zero, one, one zero, one zero. Ah! <laughs> but what I so much love about this is that it's never explained why Bender is so terrified. The only way that you, the viewer, will ever understand what's happening is if you, the viewer, while you're watching it, can do the binary to decimal translation in your head on the fly in half a second. Otherwise, it doesn't make any sense. So that's the level of, of mathematical um, uh, kind of, <laughs> of trivia that's kind of embedded in this program. If you enjoyed this video and would like to hear even more from Simon, well, you're in luck because he's the special guest in the most recently released episode of the Number 5 podcast. You can find it on your podcast player of choice. You can also go to the Number 5 website or you can listen via YouTube on the Number File 2 channel. There'll be links on the screen and down in the video description.